Thank you for attending. Uh, the ODI squad for games three and four, we've included uh, four players who weren't in the previous squad. So Michael Clark, um, David Warner, and Matthew Wade as foreshadowed, uh, coming back after having a break. And we've also included uh, Moses Henriques uh, as a uh, pace bowling uh, all-rounder. We think uh, the conditions in Brisbane are likely to suit that type of player. Uh, and who we've left out, Brad Haddon. Uh, we've left out also Aaron Finch, uh, Steve Smith, uh, and Usman Khawaja. And Ben Cutting is also out. We've gone from a squad of uh, 13 to a squad of 12. So you'll have that team in front of you there. And I'll welcome your questions. John, I guess the selection of Moses on Rex, was that sort of a reflection that that, the selection of Moses on Rex, is that sort of a, a sign that you thought you needed another seam bowling option among your all-rounders compared yeah, to sort of last night? Yes, certainly. Um, I mean, as I've stated right through the season and, and uh, on many occasions, we need all-rounders. And we're really trying to groom Glenn Maxwell as an all-rounder, a spin bowling all-rounder, an obvious interest there for India. Uh, Mitchell Marsh was on the frame some time ago, but, but he's injured. Uh, Moses Henriques has been on the horizon for some years now uh, and this is his opportunity and we really hope that he'll, he'll come on as a seam bowling all-rounder. You selected him for the Australia A game earlier in the summer. I think yep. you also saw him at the Wacker a few times. Yes. How have you rated his progress this season? Well, I, I saw him bat at the Wacker when he made 78 in the uh, Ryobi Cup and then 78 in the Shield match and he batted superbly. And then he went to Sydney and made 150 and 50 not out in the next game. Uh, and he also, when I saw him bowl in Perth, he bowled very well too. So he's, he's got a lot of talent um, and we hope that he performs and we want consistent performance from him. But as I've said for some extended period, we need, we need all-round players. Brad Haddon, what's the severity of his hamstring injury and it, has it ruled him out of contention for the, the Tour of India? Uh, look, we don't know exactly. I mean, I saw Brad last night and again at the airport this morning. We're hoping it's not too serious. We hope it's like a couple of weeks and nothing more than that. Um, and, you know, there is a real chance we'll take two wicket keepers to India and or to England. Uh, and as I've said before, the two, we consider the two best keeper batsmen in the country are he and Matthew Wade. He's not available. Who who becomes next in line? Neville, Payne, those sorts well, of Well, we've got a lot of options there and what the National Selection Panel will have to decide on that, we'll have to discuss that. But at the moment, those two are the two I've mentioned. But I think the wicket-keeping stocks in Australia at the moment are very good. Uh, Ludeman's doing very well for South Australia. Payne, obviously, is gaining confidence and coming back. Hanscom and Triffitt are two very good young keeper batsmen. And, of course, Peter Neville is a very good player too. Just sorry, you go. Uh, sorry, just looking right. forward to the yeah. um, to the rest of the, the one days. Do you expect Shane Watson to be part of, of any of those? Or? Well, we just we'll just wait and see to see when Shane is fit to play, and then he will come under consideration. But we're cer certainly hoping that he'll be fit, uh, you know, by the end of this month. But we do, I just haven't had in the last three or four days. I haven't heard just how he's progressing there. Would the one days be where you would like to see him or, or the Sheffield Shield? Well, we'll have to see that. I mean, it, it might be a really good... Uh, we're really hoping that he'll be ready for the Sheffield Shield match, which I think starts on the 24th of January, and then we'll go from there. It would be terrific if he's available, but I, I don't know yet whether he's likely or not. Just back on Moses and Reese, do you think he's the kind of player... I mean, he's shown a lot of potential in the yeah. domestic form. Do you think he's the kind of player that will elevate his game um, at the Well, we're, we're certainly hoping so. And, I mean, over the years, over history, in any sport, some players play better at a higher level than the, the level down. And, and a lot of others play well at this level but not able to manage that. Uh, he'll certainly have the opportunity. Uh, and I think, you know, one of the obvious things that we're doing is we have got an incredibly demanding schedule for the next 14 or 15 months, an incredibly demanding schedule, and that workload in terms of the players will need to be shared by, you know, more than a squad of 13 or 14. And these young men who are getting opportunities, we really hope that they prosper 
and uh, you know develop our debt. And I've stated 12 months ago that one of our real aims is to develop, is to develop depth. And I think in recent months there's been some pleasing signs in that regard. But we need depth because there's a lot of cricket and the three different formats during the next, as I say, 13 or 14 months. Um, Aaron Finch, what did you make of his uh, two one-day three? Look, uh, Aaron Finch is a very good player and we've seen him in the Ryobi and the, the, the T20. He's a fine player. Uh, I thought he looked re in really good shape in Melbourne and then he got out, uh, so he's had two innings and he didn't, make, he, he didn't make big runs in either. But that doesn't change my mind or other people's mind much about him at all. He, he still remains. A week, three or four days ago, he was a very good player, worthy of contention, and he still is. And I think we're very likely to see him back in the T20s. He's a very good and an exciting player, wonderful player. You still dropped him, though, from the side, so... Well, well... We rested David Warner, Michael Clark, and uh, Matthew Wade with a clear intention of bringing them back. So I don't think Aaron really expected to be retained after that. And Phil Hughes made 100. So I mean, it, I think it's all very obvious and clear and was from the beginning. What did you make of Brett Lee's comments um, about not knowing who the best side is and his uh, Yeah, well, his he, he's not correct because we do know. We know very clearly, so he's wide of the mark. Um, just on Usman Kamaja and yeah. Steve Smith, but it, excuse me, was it always the plan to have them play? Yes, it was. Each? Yeah, and as Mickey Arthur stated very clearly last night, and they they understood that, and I had a word with each of them last night, um, and I think they were well. I, I indicated to them that selecting them in the squad was a very clear signal from us that they are in contention and we want them to improve and we want them to have some opportunity and we want them to be encouraged by us including them in, in the squad. And they seem to be very pleased with the message and very pleased to have been included and obviously saw with those players coming back there was a good chance they were going to be squeezed out. It does make it tough though, just one game for, for Usman? I think they would prefer one game to no games. And, and, and they received a very clear message. And it's not only playing the game, but being in the squad, in the Australian squad, for four or five days, and the intensity of training and being there with Mickey Arthur and the other support staff, it's a very good experience for them. And, you know, let me just go back, uh, you know, say to, to Jackson Bird. Now, if he makes the tour, the Ashes tour, and he's obviously in strong contention for that, and he doesn't play in the first couple of tests, and then the third test comes up and there might be an injury and he's in contention and, and he plays. Is he, are we better off for him having the experience in Melbourne and Sydney or playing his first test there in an Ashes series not having had that experience? And he's been in the squad. I think he's benefited greatly from the 10 days he had with the squad and the uh, two test matches. Just going back and that's part of the overall strategy, sorry. Right. Just going back to Hughes Finch, so yeah. Hughes, was that always the plan to keep him in the squad or is it the simple fact that he made a ton and Finch did Well, it was, I mean, Hughes, Philip Hughes is much more in our plans in terms of India and the Ashes and that sort of thing. So we're very keen to have him in the environment and, you know, get him progressing, you know, better that way. So that was, I would say, Phil Hughes was, was always ahead of Aaron Finch in that sense. Well, he's done international and we've seen <coughs> probably glimpses of what Glenn Maxwell can do with the bat, with the ball probably not yet and hasn't even bowled a lot. Are you sort of hoping for the rest of the one day series that assuming it fits in with Michael's yeah. plans game to game yeah. that he might actually bowl a bit more? Yeah, look, we're hoping it will and um, I, I think Glenn's bowling has certainly improved uh, from the time of Australia 8. Uh, and he got into the fold a bit there and it was explained very clearly to him that uh, one of the aspects of, of bowling finger spin, you know, it's, it's different if you're a Muralitharan or a Shane Warne, but if you're bowling just steady uh, spin, you need to be very patient and very accurate and try and build up pressure uh, and, in a sense, be bowling when, when batsmen get out because he's a very exuberant, enthusiastic uh, person who and patience is not usually to the fore 
And I think he's learnt that very well. He bowled very well in that game. He bowled well in, in Shield games. And when he's getting an opportunity, he's showing signs of improving. He's not a front-line spinner. He's a batsman who bowls. And as I've said you know, many times, we are looking for batsmen who can bowl decently. I mean, Dilshan with um, <coughs> the Sri Lankan side, you know, opening batsman, and he bowls very decent off spinners. You need your four bowlers and you need some of your batsmen who can give you some decent overs. And that's how we're really trying to develop Glenn Maxwell. And he's got a lot of talent. And James Pattinson made his club return on the weekend. Yes. How do you handle him the rest? Do you sort of say, bring him back for the ODIs, or do you say you well, want him playing shield because you want him to make yeah. a late bid for the India tour? Yeah, look, that's you know very much in our discussion. Uh, and hopefully, uh, I mean, it, it could well be that he plays some ODIs and some shield cricket because the intention at this stage is obviously, you know, strongly in contention for the Indian tour. And I think he did well on the weekend too. Yesterday's loss, how do you describe it? And do selectors need to be held accountable for it? Well, firstly, I'd say congratulations to Sri Lanka. I thought they played very well. And they've got a very good one-day record and they played very well here in Australia last year. And we beat them in the third of three finals. So they're a good side. Uh, they won a good toss yesterday. Uh, the conditions, they used the conditions. The, co the covers have been on for four or five hours. It rained uh, in Adelaide until about one o'clock, I think it was. Uh, and they bowled very well. And our batsmen, they were just nibbling it around. And their bowlers don't have a lot of pace. And they used the conditions very well. And our batsmen really struggled. And all credit to the Sri Lankan bowlers. Uh, we didn't play well. We hope we come back uh, better next time. But it was a second string side as well. We, Do you, we, you had a, we had, the obvious thing is people need a break. Journalists, my guess is you have a week or two off sometime. Everybody in the community virtually has a break. Michael Clark, David Warner, Matthew Wade needed a break and they had a break. Just as Adam Gilchrist and others used to in past seasons. It's a pretty obvious thing. They had a break. That created an opportunity for some others. They were superb here at Melbourne. It didn't go well in Adelaide. And we, we'll see how we go in Brisbane and we'll be very determined to do well. Would you break three of your top people at once, though? Most, most industries wouldn't do that. What do you mean, break three of your top? Well, you wouldn't allow... For example, three journalists who are your senior journalists to go on holidays all at the same time. Well, it was it was the appropriate time to do it for all of those three. We're concerned with informed player management, and that's what we're doing, and that's what we're doing in all circumstances. It's just sensible, common sense player management. Um, you mentioned the moving ball. I mean, very similar conditions of what the Aussies will face um, in, in England, especially yes. of what they yeah. were yesterday. So, yeah. I mean, is that a real issue? It's been a, a seemingly an issue with the top six facing the, the moving ball. Yeah, look, the, me, the moving ball like that. I mean, the Australian players are, yes, are less used to it than, than England players. Uh, and in that ODI series in England, we were caught batting first on wickets that they took the covers off just as play started and England bowled very well and, and it was very difficult. Uh, more difficult than it actually was the other night in Adelaide. Uh, but we just need to, we need, as always, we need to do as well as we possibly can. And when we bowl, bowl a really good line and length and exploit those conditions. Um, just with the, uh, the rotations and the constant fast... Do you mean, paint. I presume you mean uh, informed player management? Is that what you mean? No. <laughs> Is that what you meant or not? Well, I try to keep it short for our readers. Yeah, but I mean, that's what you meant. <laughs> that's the topic we're discussing here. Yeah. Um, just with, with Siddle and Hilfenhaus, for example, they, yeah. were, they were rested in Perth and then Mickey uh, revealed a few days later that they both had niggling injuries. Stark was rested in Melbourne and then Mickey revealed last night that he's got ankle problems, yeah. which he's playing in pain. Yeah. You know, I guess there's two ways of looking at it, you, you know, it's great that people are taking interest in cricket, but it also means not all opinions are informed and people are throwing Yeah, look, that's, things that's back. a question of just how far you inform. I mean, you know, with I Mitchell mean, Stark, I mean, what, what Mickey said last night was, was, you know, absolutely true, you know, and there's, there's pain in the ankle and bowling workloads. 
So it was a pretty clear-cut decision that it wasn't in the interest of Mitchell Stark or Australian cricket for him to play in that game. And Peter Siddle, after the Adelaide game, A, was exhausted, and B, had a really tight hamstring. If he had played, it was unlikely that he'd have got through the game. It was the sensible, it was the right decision. What I'm saying is some of this info comes out a few days later, and in the interim, you guys are getting bagged without people knowing the full knowledge. We're pretty resilient. So does that lead to some revision of how these things are handled, I guess, in a Well, it's, it's, just, it's just a matter of... I mean, I, I don't think... Uh, it's in the interests uh, of the player to reveal every little niggle. I don't. You know, I think... I mean, players basically don't want to be seen as sort of vulnerable or physically suspect, and we respect that. And I think that's the right decision. So we won't always say that he's got a bit of a bad knee because more that can be made of it, and it's, it's awkward for the player. And we'd rather take the heat than the players. Having said all of that, yeah. there are so many injuries at the moment and so many no, changes. No, there have been so many injuries over the years and I think two factors that need to be understood very clearly is that the level, the three different formats and the amount of cricket and the amount of travel is very different from the past. And the other key factor that's not often mentioned is the lack of proper conditioning periods. I mean. AFL footballers have a four or five month period in which they have a very carefully programmed conditioning period. Now, the cricketers at the moment, it's very difficult to find a time slot, an extended time slot, when they can undergo appropriate conditioning. Now, that has various outcomes, and I think you see it in, in various, you know, in obvious ways. Last question, James. John, what did you make of Kane Richardson's performance yesterday and what's been the message uh, to him following that game? Well, look, he, um, you know, to be frank, on the... Um, we, we expected Mitchell Johnson to be able to play, yeah. but, you know, his left side, his right-hand side, uh, his leading side just wasn't right. It was We considered it was a risk not worth taking, so we played him. I mean, he, he's a really promising young player. He's got some pace and he's done very well in some Ryobi Cup games and especially in the T20. Uh, it was disappointing that last night he was ruled out for running on the pitch, but he, the six overs he bowled, he looked good. He's a really promising young cricketer. Um, just quickly, Glenn Maxwell and uh, McKay and Hussey not available for the BBL finals, semi-finals? No, no, that was, that's been signalled for a long time. Uh, and, you know, the scheduling for both the uh, ODIs and the Big Bash League was out for a long time. And I think most pundits would have predicted that uh, David Hussey, uh, Mackay, Wade and Maxwell were very likely to be in the ODI side. So Finch goes straight back to the, then to the ranking case? Uh, yes, yeah. presumably, yeah. yeah. He, he's not in this squad. Yeah, and the squad, the squad assembles in Brisbane uh, on Tuesday. Yeah. Just checking yeah. Is Johnson um, and Stark they're both fine? Well, we anticipate they will be. I mean, the the, the medical staff said that, that it is very likely they'll be fit, and you know we'll we'll test them on. Uh, we'll you know have monitor them over the next couple of days, and they'll assemble on Tuesday, and we'll make a full assessment on Wednesday. And if either of them don't, you know, if, if there's any doubt, we'll bring other players into the squad but we anticipate they'll be okay.